with your number one overall pick if you were the Cincinnati Bengals? All righty. I need zero time to make this decision. Um, if I was the Bengals, um, I would draft Joe Burrow, hometown kid. Who doesn't like a hometown hero? We love uh, him. We love him. I, I mean, I've been living in Atlanta my whole life, and it uh, seems like every time they can draft a hometown kid, they never do it. So, you know, if I'm the Bengals, I'm taking Joe Burrow. He has a swagger. Never thought I'd use that word. I always hated when analysts use it. So um, I feel like I have to use it. Um, he has a swagger about him. He is confident. Um, I mean, he did. The one question I have about him is his team uh, in Lu- Louisiana, they had so many top receivers. Um, he's going to go into Cincinnati with an A.J. Green who's been beat up the last couple years, and they really don't have anyone else um, as like a strong number one option other than A.J., and he's beat up. So it'll be interesting to see what Joe Burrow can bring to the Bengals. <laughs> All right, on to my pick. Oh, hold on, my phone's ringing. Oh, that's uh, so respectful. Uh, hello? Oh, Chris Greer, GM for the... Miami Dolphins. Oh my gosh! You oh, you would like my pick. Uh, that's going to cost you your fifth, and probably a second round pick. Oh, okay. What? All right, deal. Oh, we've got a trade. Trade alert! Uh, Chris Greer just called me. He has my number. Wow. He does. Um, he would like my third overall pick, and with the third overall pick, the Miami Dolphins will be selecting. To uh, tag a live Olia. Close, Close enough. enough. Close enough. Wow. What a monster pick. It just had to happen. You're looking at a Miami team that's playing hard. They really, I didn't think they were going to get one win last season, and they finished out the season pretty strong. They're playing hard for their coach. Um, Tua, I personally think, is the best quarterback in this class. And honestly, what I would love to see happen with this pick, it's pretty far-fetched, but um, I would love to see the Patriots move up uh, and pick Tua. Uh, Saban and Belichick are really tight, and he's had a history of picking Alabama players. So I think, you know, I don't think it's too far-fetched, but I don't think it's going to happen, but I would love to see that happen. You look at the teams that are ahead of them, the Lions, the Giants, they're not going to pick pick any quarterbacks so you still have them trading up yeah i think i think the chargers also call and inquire about the pick um so i think miami just wants to be safe they want to get their guy and Tua's their guy i think there's a big gap between tua and let's say justin herbert probably is the third best quarterback um so you got you got to take him you got to take tua i mean there's health concerns but he's a leader he's has the athletic ability, um, that dual threat, would you say? Um, and his long ball, I mean, it's probably the best in this draft. Um, it's up there with Joe Burrow, obviously. Um, but I, I would take two if I'm, if I'm the Dolphins. Because at number four, I originally had the Chargers trading up over the Dolphins so that they wow. could select their guy and Justin Herbert over the Dolphins. They get their guy that they love. For the future, Justin Herbert from Oregon is going to be the next quarterback of the Los Angeles Chargers. And their theory, what they would love is for Tyrod Taylor to start and Justin Herbert to sit and learn, which, by the way, that's that's a bogus theory, which we, we proved on time in football. That doesn't work. You're either good or you're either, you're either not good. Uh, but that's what NFL teams like to consider. That's what they do for quarterbacks, and I feel like that's what they're going to do. Justin Herbert may not start in week one. But I think he's going to be the future quarterback for the L.A. Chargers going to SoFi Stadium. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think the Chargers would be licking their chops if Justin was their quarterback for the future and if they can get him at six. Um, I think, you know, Tua is obviously from Hawaii, so he kind of has that West Coast vibe. So I think their first choice would probably be Tua between the two. Um, but, I mean, Justin Herbert, he's no slouch. I mean, he's got an arm. Here's the pick we've all been waiting for. Number 23, the New England Patriots. The New England Patriots, and I absolutely love this because I had them trading up for Jordan Love, 
and Jordan Love is still on the board on our mock draft. And I think it'll, it'll give uh, some competition to Jared Stidham. Um, I think they're both kind of similar, honestly. Stidham uh, and Love, both kind of big guys who can throw the ball. Um, some accuracy issues, obviously decision-making. But like I said before, when you have the best coach in the league, you can overcome those factors. And Jordan Love is – I think, I think that Jordan Love will be picked by the New England Patriots in this draft. Nice. I don't I don't know exactly where it will happen, but I think they end up with Jordan Love. I think it's either them or the Packers with Jordan Love. I think I love Jordan Love, but, I mean, 17 interceptions last season – and according to scouting reports that uh, that were released, um, Bill Belichick loves, like, it doesn't matter about your arm talent. It doesn't matter about your natural talent. It matters about accuracy and your decision-making. And I felt like Jordan Love, as far as accuracy and decision-making go, I don't know. I think there's better options out there. But he is an, a phenomenal talent, and I think at this point, the better, the best natural quarterback available with tom brady departing i think bill belichick is wanting to win so badly and i think jordan love gives them that best option if they don't move up before then i've seen comparisons of jordan love to aaron Rodgers, and that's not a fair comparison at all um but they both had big arms in college uh they both didn't make great decisions and that's the one knock on Jordan Love he just doesn't make great decisions but if you have the greatest coach in the league of in history arguably I think he's the best I think he made Tom Brady who Tom Brady is I actually had the Patriots trading back uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs so the Chiefs trade up to number 23 which by the way if, if the Patriots go to number 32 to draft a quarterback I had them picking Jalen Hurts wow I I because I I just go back to it doesn't matter about your talent or, or how far you can throw the ball it's about your accuracy and decision making and Jalen Hurts averaged like seventy percent completed passes in the last two years and didn't throw that many interceptions at all. Right. Um, there's also another guy similar that fits that mold, Jake Frum, that they could draft later in the second yeah. round or maybe even the third round if he's available. But very similar to Tom Brady, Jake Frum. Yeah. Very, very comparable guys. Great leaders. Not the greatest arm talent, but great decision making. And that that's where I have the problem with uh, Jalen Hurts. Um, he doesn't have the vision downfield. And you could see that when he would play against decent defenses. He couldn't. You look at his completion percent overall, yes, it might be good. But that was his knock at Alabama. He was not an accurate quarterback. And you could tell when he played Georgia, when he played LSU, like his – Accuracy wasn't there um, against those good defenses, and it's really the vision of the field. I think he's very intelligent. I think he's very smart. He knows offense as well. He knows where people are supposed to be placed, everything. But I don't think he can read defenses yet. I think that's his one knock, and I think that'll be his Achilles heel.